Hey everybody, this is me again. I'm just talking today about um, free speech. Why uh, it's a necessity to have if you want a peaceful uh, land or nation. Because um, there's many things that are implications uh, not evident on the surface. But upon further examination you'll say you're right. So stay tuned. Now, first of all, we're going to uh, talk about a topic which I learned about from this guy on YouTube called Zoomer Historian, which I don't know what that means, but I would reckon he knows a thing or two about history, right? Um, he says the book burnings in Nazi Germany were, or in the Weimar Republic were because of the degeneracy which brought upon itself before there had been anybody to challenge the liberal establishment. So, for example, the books they burned were regarding um, this guy who did sex experiments uh, for the elite people who were in the Weimar Republic uh, to, to, to really do any degenerate, disgusting thing possible, uh, sodomy and, you know, all different things, uh, unimaginably bad stuff. And so the research on that maybe end up banned and burned, but hey... Uh, was it a great loss to humankind to not have books about transgenderism in Germany before Hitler? I would argue the context makes a whole big difference, man. Because uh, it seems like there's so many parallels between the Weimar Republic and our failing society. And the dullards who say, there are no failures, we are just uh, experiencing what is the ruler's will. Oh, okay. Right. Now, when you realize how screwed you are, you might get a protection device. I don't know. I can't because I don't have enough money. Uh, everybody knows that. But, you know, that's what they try to do. Anyways, free speech, right? Uh, if you silence people, if you uh, fire them from their job for having an opinion, you kick them off of a social platform which still allows Israelis to post gore videos of what they accomplished, in their words. Um, you get kicked off for saying, let's stop a war. Let's not have a war where they post videos of the abhorrent things they do. And then they don't get kicked off. I get kicked off. So I can't monetize anything. There's an incentive for me not to uh, voice myself in a way which is like what represents me. So therefore, when you have people upholding a status quo, which many like me are willing to destroy by any means, uh, then... You must have discussion if you'd like, you know, any chance at peace in the future. If you drive the KKK underground, then they'll be having uh, profitable discussions by themselves about what they're going to be doing, right? Or if you say, uh, this is not an acceptable way to believe anything. So you people who believe it firmly... Uh, you cannot talk about it on these social networks, these things, or TikTok. We got a ban because uh, they cannot make anything nearly as good. So they got to ban it or sell it to American. Now, is that really a good thing? I don't know. I don't care. But what I do care about is, okay, so people like me who have beliefs that actually tend to make sense when you question them, like logic, uh, that is like formal, uh, you know, discussion and critique of ideas based on reason. Uh, it really uh, screws you up because if you're going to voice your true feelings, you're going to pay a price. And as long as there's a price to be paid for feeling a certain way, uh, then there will be a price to be felt by those who silence everybody.
And that's not me making a, you know, prediction. I'm saying that's how it goes. Um, for every action, there's a reaction. And when you oppress people, Franz Fanon, the psychiatrist who observed the Algerian freedom fighting against colonial despots, moral despots, they were ran out of Africa, the whites, the, the usurpers of everything good. Uh, were run up out of Africa by men with pitchforks. Okay? It, it doesn't take very much to scare the rich. Okay? Uh, you could tell them that, you know, there's no Somalian kid in their closet anymore, and they'll be upset and saying, oh, well, where did he go? But as long as there are those who long for freedom and cannot express such a thing, then we as a society will be paying hefty prices for it. And that's what I'm telling you people. So, when you realize the power that you hold to negotiate power, power is not established and there and set in stone by God. If it is a God, it's a God of the rich. Uh, Allahu Akbar. Because uh, Allah is not the God of the rich. He's a god of the uh, oppressed, of the downtrodden, of those who are despots not by choice because nobody likes them. And so their savior gave them the word, uh, Allah is great, and said, you know, here's a bunch of conditions. And in Islam, the one thing many people do not understand is how much it tells you how to do your life. So that if you want to call yourself a Muslim, you've got to be a pretty darn good person. You know what I'm saying? Like, you've got to give away a lot of your money in order to be considered a Muslim. And you cannot be going around bragging about doing it. So nobody knows that you did it. Which is called Ummah, uh, doing something to the for the Ummah, which uh, I think is a collective Muslim people, you know? So there's like a, an awareness of the fact that we're not just isolated individuals held together by um, artificial bonds which are created uh, by the government and such. Uh, there are useful ways uh, to gain and to make gains we must be uh, sanctioned by Allah or God. Whatever you're going to call him. He's not the God of the rich who do not feed anyone when they're starving. Uh, he's the God of the people who would have those guys running for their damn life to the helicopter. Okay? So when, when you stop playing by their game, which they say, Look, we're going to do some terrible stuff to every nation which has profitable resources, in your name, but nevertheless... Uh, then, then uh, you know, you, you just starve, wait, wait, we're just going to bomb Vietnam, we're going to bomb whatever Cambodia, Laos, in your name, so that people will hate who you are, uh, for the greater interest of the 0.1% of people who have, you know, enough money to subsist and still destroy the world. Share this video if you want a uh, future and you know you do otherwise we're doomed because there's not really that many people capable of thinking man like i don't need to go to university again i went there already got a bachelor's and i know enough about human nature yeah i know about about human nature enough whereupon uh it, with you guys helping and you guys participating we can make a better future for ourselves. I don't need to be educated. I could educate a whole lot more people than believe that I could. They walk around in their ivory tower aware of the fact that they've got enough to be fat for the rest of their life. I don't. So I don't have uh, any stability. It makes me a, a better person, more courageous, and I don't fear anything. The rich will fear when you take up a book.
Okay? That's why they spy on you 20 times more than they spy on Russian people, who they say is your enemy.